Have you just finished applying to college? Or are you applying to college soon and wondering more about the college admissions process? If so, in this video, I'm gonna share with you some secrets that college admissions offices may not want you to know about the admissions process. Now, college admissions, like it or not, is something of a game, right? It's not only a game for the students who are trying to game the system and get into it, but it's also a game for the colleges because colleges have to compete for business, i.e. applications in the marketplace. There are rankings that come out in publications like US News and World Report is the most famous, Forbes. There are other lists, the world's top 100 colleges. There are these other lists that are out there that rank schools and these rankings really impact how many applicants a college gets, how much prestige that college has, its ability to attract good faculty, and just overall its ability to thrive and survive as a university. If that ranking drops or if it rises, that really can affect a school's overall kind of situation. So colleges need to protect that ranking, and in order to do so, they sometimes create particular strategies and I'm gonna talk about some of what I think those strategies are today. If you're wondering who I am, my name's Brooke. I've been coaching SAT and ACT prep for over a decade and a half. I've scored perfectly on both museums as an adult. More importantly, I've coached people to perfect scores. And you can find out all my secrets of test prep in our online courses at supertutortv.com, the best ACT prep course ever, the best SAT prep course ever. You can check those out. We also have two books for the ACT math section, the best ACT math books ever. So if you're looking for some math, Help. They are the most comprehensive books I know of on the market that cover ACT math. If you're looking to totally crush that test, that could be your ticket. So definitely go check those out. If you're looking for something totally free, subscribe to our mailing list, supertutortv.com slash subscribe, and we will keep you in the know of anything we have going on here at Super Tutor TV. And finally, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. We're on all of those platforms, so you can find our page, and we'd love for you to connect with us. Cool. Okay. Let's talk college admission secrets. So the first caveat that I'm gonna say is that I have not necessarily interviewed actual colleges for why they do what they do. But I see a correlation between these kind of behaviors and some surprising behaviors that have arisen as I've been working with students through this college process that I've come to know of through the personal experiences of my students. And it seems to me that some of the motive is, is colleges trying to play the game. That does not mean that that is what motivated completely every college to do all of these things. I am just saying what I see and then what the outcome is. But I also think if I call up their press office, they're not gonna just say, oh yes, we're trying to protect our rank. Like that's not the response I'm gonna get from colleges, right? So I'm gonna point out some of these correlations to you guys. I will say it with a grain of salt because there could be other motivations that I don't know about that are making colleges want to do these kind of things. But let's get into it. Number one, guaranteed transfer programs. So what are guaranteed transfer programs and why might colleges be invoking them? I mean, when you apply to college, you think there's probably two outcomes, right? You either get accepted or you get rejected. <laughs> Just kidding. You can also get kind of admitted through something called a guaranteed transfer program. Well, what it is, is you get a letter from a college. Instead of getting an acceptance letter, you get this letter that says, we really liked you, but we don't have room in our freshman class this fall, but we have room for you either the second semester of freshman year, or we have room for you sophomore year. If you go to some other college, you get a certain GPA at that other college. Hey, we will guarantee that we will let you enter a college and you can come on down and we'll have you and that'll be all fine and dandy, right? Why would a college do this? Why wouldn't a college just let you in? I mean, some people might say, oh, well, they want you to prove your grades because they really liked you, but you just hadn't proved your grades. Like that might be the explanation that a college gives you. But I have students that I know and I've seen their transcripts and I know what kind of grades they had and they had pretty, good grades, and they still are kind of shoved into these kind of programs, well, what does it do? If you guarantee a transfer to a student, that admission doesn't count in your freshman admit rate, right? So if you're trying to pad yourself for the rankings and you're trying to rank higher on US News and World Report, wouldn't it look better if, say, you were USC and your admit rate were, say, 12-something percent or 11 percent or something like that, wouldn't it look better if that were your admit rate instead of say 19% what it used to be like several years ago? Because then it'd be easier to climb the ranks because you'd look more exclusive. And who doesn't wanna look more exclusive when it comes to being a college? So what this does is it helps schools fill their classrooms. It helps schools graduate lots of students, 
but without having to take them right away so that they can kind of pad their statistics. It also helps them protect things like what the GPA of kids who get in is, what the test scores of kids who get in is, because they can just take the kids who are at the top and then the kids who they actually like and want to admit that might be slightly lower, well, they can still let them in, but they can shovel them in in this other program. And so they get them in, but then they don't reflect that at all in any of their U.S. News and World Reports reported freshman admitted class statistics, right? Number two, admitting huge numbers from the wait list. So another tactic that I see some schools using, and it's not all schools, but I see some schools doing, is that they admit huge numbers of students from the wait list. If you admit kids off a wait list where you make them wait to see where they've gotten in everywhere else before they then write you a letter of continued interest, right? To say, hey, I still want to go to your school. Hey, I still want to be considered for your wait list. Hey, still let me in. The kids you admit off the wait list are already not accepted to all these other schools. So you're probably the best thing they've got going or they wouldn't have written that letter. And so the chances that that kid who was waitlisted is going to go to your school if they write that letter and say, hey, I really still want to go here are a lot higher than if you just given an offer of admission to everybody in that waitlist pool, right? So that protects your yield. It protects how many students decide to attend that have been accepted. And so that's another statistic that goes into your rankings and things like that. The other thing that a waitlist does is it protects your admit rate, right? If you don't actually admit students and you just put a bunch of them on a waitlist, you don't have to include that in your admit rate, right? Number three. Another way that schools can kind of leverage themselves in this process is creating very large transfer programs. Now, there's like a dual competing stories here on the transfer end. One story, which is usually the most popular story and the one that all the, you know, press people from every university are telling, is the story that transfer programs help create opportunity for non-traditional students and for students who may come from uh, less affluent backgrounds, which is true because community college is a heck of a lot cheaper than almost every four-year university in the country. So if you go to community college for two years and then you transfer into a four-year university, you're going to save a ton of money. So it's an option that a lot of students who want to save money do. And you know what? I am actually very thankful that there are large transfer programs out there. I'm super thankful for it because I think there are a lot of students who, when they're playing the game and they try to play this like test score game, they're not SAT, ACT people. And that doesn't mean you're not smart or that you don't have awesome skills or that you shouldn't go to college, right? That's one kind of metric. It's one way of thinking. And this is, creates a different pathway and that's really cool. But what we find is that you look at a school like USC and you see their regular admit rate is, is pretty small, right? And then you look at their transfer admit rate and it's more than double their regular admit rate. So you can also see how, again, schools can kind of pad their elitist kind of exclusivity with their freshman admit rate by pushing a lot of the students into a transfer situation. And that can help them look better, right? Number four, this is more of just something that's sad and this is using test scores as a proxy for wealth. So again, one of the other things that I mentioned at the beginning of this video is not only are schools playing the game to try to get their rankings up, they're also playing a game to try to protect how much money they have coming in. My understanding of this is actually based off of reading articles. Um, I read an article about an interview with a former admissions person from Trinity College, which is a liberal arts college on the East Coast. This is something that might affect schools that maybe are not necessarily as highly ranked as like your Harvards or your Stanfords or things like that, but that are looking to try to bring in enough money to make sure that the college budget is balanced, right? Some schools are need blind. Some schools are need aware. Some schools say they meet 100% of demonstrated need of the kids who are getting in. But that doesn't mean that all these schools that are having these wonderful programs where they're trying to help everyone and, and, and pay for everyone's way as much as possible, that they have the resources easily to do so. So one way that schools try to make sure that they can cover all their bills is by admitting students who they think probably have a little bit more money and can pay their own way. One way that sometimes schools identify that is by using test scores as a proxy for wealth. Now it's true if you have high test scores and high grades and those correlate together, you know, you may be wealthy, you may not be wealthy. It may depend on what kind of high school you went to and how good of an education you got there. But when you have these schools who have discrepant test scores, who have these higher test scores and lower GPAs, those circumstances tend to indicate wealth more often. And some colleges use those kind of discrepant applicants as a pool 
of when they get to sort of the last kids they're letting in to scoop into their sort of admin pile to ensure that they have enough kids who can pay their own way. There you go. It's a dirty trick that some colleges might play, for better or for worse, to try to play the game and play the system. Unfortunately, you know, we all have multiple pressures on us. Colleges have to pay their bills, right? They've got to play the rankings game because that's part of what you're buying into when you apply to these schools anyway. And it's not always pretty and the motivations are not always pure and the policies sometimes can, I think, sideswipe some students because you didn't expect them to be coming your way. But hopefully at least this gives you guys some insights onto some ways that the system works so that you're just at least a little bit more aware of what might happen to you or how you might be able to navigate the system. And in any case, I wish you guys the best of luck with your applications if you are applying. Do you know of any secret tricks that colleges have played on you? Do you have any circumstances like the guaranteed transfer program that have happened to you, but maybe you're there a little bit different? and you want to talk about those, feel free to post a comment below this video. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Subscribe to our mailing list, supertutortv.com slash subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for joining us.